Hey everybody, this is Grant, your friendly OpenShift team member. Now today I just wanted to make a quick video to show you some of the new stuff we've been working on in our upstream project, OpenShift Origin, which is also called OpenShift 3. If you're not familiar with OpenShift and what we've been doing, we've been spending a lot of time working on both Docker and Kubernetes and making it accessible to the developer. Now the little video I'm going to create today, I don't have anything scripted. I'm just going to kind of walk you through getting it up and running on your local box. Now on the box I'm using today, it's actually uh, Mac OS X, El Capitan I believe is what it's called. And I'm going to be using the all-in-one image that you can download um, on the internet. And I'll show you where to get that. You just go to openshift.org slash vm. And you can download this Vagrant virtual machine um, that uses um, VirtualBox. And there's instructions on here. And so I've already down downloaded that. And since I already have it downloaded, the only thing I need to do to get OpenShift running on my local box is type in Vagrant up. And this will spin it up. Now the prerequisites for this is to have both Vagrant and VirtualBox installed on your system. If you go out to blog.openshift.com and search for Grant Shipley, which is my name, you'll be able to see some detailed instructions on how to get this working on the Macintosh, Windows machines, as well as Linux machines. Now, once I issued the Vagrant up command here, it's going to head and start up this virtual machine that has OpenShift already running for me. And a few things to note here is that the IP address that we use by default is 10.2. 2.2.2. If that doesn't work for your particular network configuration, you can just look at this Vagrant file and change the IP address on this line um, to use whatever you would like to use for your local environment. Another thing to note is the amount of memory allocated to the virtual machine. By default, I believe it's two or four gigs, um, but my machine that I'm running on actually has 32 gigs so I went ahead and bumped it up to um, just under 8 gigs of memory allocated to OpenShift and you can see this is the origin machine so now that we have this up and running let's go ahead and start taking a look at the console okay so to get to the console all you need to do is go to 10.2.2.2 colon 8443 is the port and let's log in with the username of OpenShift and the password of OpenShift you can use any username and password you want for the virtual machine. It doesn't matter. Um, it, we allow any type of authentication just for demo purposes. And once I get to the console, the first thing I see is that I need to create a project. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Project. And I am going to name this project Demo PHP. And we're going to, the display name is PHP Application. And just a short description is my demo PHP application. Now, when I'm typing on my keyboard, I am doing this in real time, so you can actually hear me typing. I apologize. I am using a mechanical keyboard, and those can be kind of noisy. But if you don't have one, I suggest getting one. They're great. Although, take note that if you get on a lot of conference calls, your multitasking ability goes to zero because people will complain that you're typing. All right, so let's create this project. So now I have a, a project created, and by default, it's going to drop me into this menu to create an application, right, based off an image or template. And since I wanted to create a PHP application, I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to select PHP. You can also, you know, filter by keywords here. You can type in PHP. Maybe you're a Java head, and you just want to look at the Java stuff. Maybe you're a hipster and just want to bang out some Node.js. Let's filter that in. Uh, but let's go ahead and do PHP. Let's do PHP 5.6. And you'll notice on this screen, there's this little tag here called Builder. Now that's where the true magic of open source comes in and, and OpenShift, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that we have this other project inside of OpenShift called Source to Image. And we have these builder images that you can select. Let me show you how that works real quick. It's, it's pretty phenomenal. So I'm going to select PHP. It's going to ask me for a name of my application. Now, remember, we put in a name before, but that was for the project. So you can think of a project as a grouping 
of different assets for your application. So you may have a web front end, a database, whatever the case may be. And then you also name each individual component. And that's what I'm naming now is my PHP web front end. So I can just call this front end. <coughs> And it's going to ask me for the Git repository URL. Now, this can be from any Git repository, including private repositories. So what I'm going to do, just hop over to my GitHub account real quick. And I am just going to click on my repositories. And I'm going to find a small PHP one here. Here's a simple PHP that we can use. Um, so let's clone or copy this uh, repo URL, paste that in. And click on create and so now what's actually happening is OpenShift is automatically cloning that source code repository it's using a base docker image with PHP in it that is a source to image enabled uh, image and so it's going to clone that repository build the source code if it needs to in PHP it's an interpreted language so it's not going to build anything but it is going to resolve any dependencies and then layer the source code on top of the base docker image and create a new docker container based on those two inputs as the output. And so the beauty of that is as a developer, you get to take full advantage of docker and orchestration with Kubernetes without having to learn all the internals of either of those technologies, right? And so it really frees you up as a developer just to focus on your code and you still get to be able to take advantage of all the cool things um, with running your application code inside of containers. Now, I did this in real time, so you can see that it was pretty quick to deploy this um, application out based on Docker and Kubernetes, and I have one pod running. Now, pod, if you're not familiar with Kubernetes, you can think of a pod as being the encapsulation of a Docker container. So you can think of a pod as a container, um, and, and inside of this pod is actually that new Docker container we just built. And under the covers, it also created a, a route for me so I can access this application immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this uh, route that was created and we can see that the application just says, this is the best PHP web app in the universe. Let me make that a little bigger. I want you to bask in all the glory of this wonderful PHP application that I created. See, that's awesome, right? So let's go ahead and close that. And one of the great things about OpenShift is the ability to quickly scale this up. So let's say I wanted to actually scale this up to, you know, three or four different containers all serving the front end. I can click this button, it's gonna scale up to two, click it again, it's gonna scale it up to three, up to four, and then let's go to five just for uh, fun here. So that's how quickly I was able to scale this PHP application up to five containers, Docker containers, all load balanced inside of OpenShift. Pretty phenomenal stuff. I didn't have to actually do anything, right? And so now if I hit this web application, it's actually gonna be load balanced across those five pods. That's crazy cool, right? So I'm taking advantage of Docker, Kubernetes, getting this web scale business going, and I don't know anything about how to set up HA proxy load balancers and how to, you know, route traffic with session affinity and all that other cool stuff that we leave to our operations team. But I was still able to take advantage of this as a developer. So let's take a look at some of the key concepts that you're going to want to know in order to start developing with this OpenShift business that we're talking about here. So if I click on browse, I can look at my builds, my deployments, my events, my image streams, pods, routes, services, storage. That's a lot of stuff, right? Hmm. So let's just start at the beginning. Let's, let's go to builds here. Now, I had a build running that took 52 seconds, and I created it four minutes ago. So 52 seconds as a PHP developer, you're probably going, okay, guy, that's, uh, that's a little long. But you have to understand what we're actually doing under the covers here. We took your source code as is from a Git repository, and we baked it and built a Docker container and image on the fly so you can deploy this container out. It's pretty amazing stuff. And, and then once we did this initial build, you saw that we were able to scale up very quickly because we just had to replicate the copy of that Docker image that we created on the fly. Okay, so that's builds in a, in a nutshell. I can actually click on this build if I want to get some more detailed information here. 
and I can view the log of the build. Pretty cool stuff, right? It's just a PHP app, so there wasn't really any uh, a build, but I can open the full uh, view of the build. I can look at the environment here, and then I can go back to details. And what's interesting is if I wanted to also start a new build, all I have to do is click this rebuild button. I can edit the build description if you want to go way into the depths of OpenShift and how build strategies work and how to kick off new builds. It's You can see that it pulled my information from GitHub. Here's the Docker image it used. It uses a CentOS. CentOS. And so you can go in and actually modify this stuff if you want to do some advanced use cases with it. So let me go back to Browse and go to Deployments. Now on Deployments, I have one deployment, but I have five replicas. That's when we scaled up to five pods. And it's going to trigger on an image change. And so what that means that is if any time I change my base image, it's going to automatically redeploy that out to the uh, cluster that I'm using. So that's pretty cool, right? Because if the base image that I'm using, that PHP image, gets a security update or whatever the case may be, by default, it's going to automatically change that image and then do a rolling deployment across my uh, my cluster. Now, you can obviously modify that to suit your needs if you don't want that to happen. There's all kinds of different build strategies that you can implement in OpenShift. But let's drill down into my deployment here. And so here, I can look at the detail details of this deployment. I can also look at the number of replicas. Right now, we have five current and five desired. I can change that right here. Let's just go up to 10. Pow, Bob's your uncle. Let's go to 10. And so we just scaled up to 10 just by adding a different thing. If we go back to the overview page, sure enough, we're up to, to 10 pods. That's crazy stuff, man. I love it. All right, let's go back to browse and deployments and poke around just a little bit more here. Um, we can see some details about the container, the image, how I could manually um, deploy this from the command line if I wanted to, um, what template we used, number of replicas again, the pod template. We can attach persistent storage if we want right here. Now that's pretty, pretty cool stuff because... It, Everyone who uses Docker Container knows that they're ephemeral in nature. Um, if you store things on the file system inside the container, once that container restarts or something happens, it's going to be lost. And so in OpenShift, we actually provide the concept of mounting persistent storage inside of your pods or your containers so your data will live on. All right, let's click on environment here. I don't have any specific environment variables set for this little small application, but if you did have environment variables, they would show up on this page. We can also redeploy from right here. We can edit the deployment YAML just like we did with the build strategy here if you want to get into some advanced use cases. Let's go back to browse, click on events, and this is where we'll see um, all of the events with this little scenario that we just did. You know, creating, scaling, pushing, building, all, all that cool stuff. We can dig into that a little bit. So let's go to image streams. And this is showing the Docker image that we're actually using and where it was pulled from. Um, this is using the internal Docker registry that we ship with OpenShift. And you can see, you know, if you wanted to pull this image out or do something with this particular image, this is where it's come from. We called this image front end, which is what we named the application. Now, if we go into pods, this is where it kind of gets a little bit cool. We can see all of these pods we're running um, that we have. Now, keep in mind, a pod, you can think of it just as a Docker container. So we had this build pod that we kicked off to actually run that build, to create that Docker image. We created it nine minutes ago. And this one has finished, so there's no containers uh, running right now. But if we look at one of the application pods, click on that, we can do some cool stuff here. We can look at the environment. Again, we don't have any environment uh, variable set. We can look at the metrics, which is pretty cool. So we have this built-in metrics um, dashboard here. They'll show you how much memory this PHP application is actually consuming. It's actually consuming 51 uh, megabytes of RAM, so not much and, and little to no CPU, not even enough to register. We can also look at the logs on this particular pod. Um, we can see the get request that we did. Um, and it'll show up here. You can follow the logs or tell them however you want to look at that or think of that. You can also view them in a full screen mode here. 
And once this log gets down below this page, there's a little button that pops up here that says follow, which will allow you to basically um, tell the log. Another thing you can do, which is really cool, is just click on this terminal right here, and we basically open up a shell inside of the remote Docker container. So you can do a ls, you can, you know, who am I, and it'll tell you that you're the user default. You can look at your index.php file and say this is the best PHP web app in the universe. We'll exit out of that. Um, you can look at log files in here, whatever you want to do, right? Um, so we're probably in HTTP. Let's just tell all of those. I guess there's no files in there or I don't have permission. Um, but you can look at log files inside the terminal. Do do you know normal terminal stuff that you'd want to do on a container um, if you wanted to. All right, so let's go back to browse and go to routes. Routes for my application front end is how this is exposed to the outside world. Internally, my pod or my container is listening on port 8080, but we're going to expose that via this um, host name. And so if I click on this, we can see that it routes to the service front end. Now service is something we haven't talked about yet, um, but a service is basically the entry point into your application. So if I looked at this service front end, we can see that the service port 8080 and target port 8080, we can create additional routes, the IP address, we can show the annotations, uh, we can create another route if we wanted to create another external entry into this service. <clears throat> okay, let's go over to storage. Now this is going to be empty, but again, this is another place that you can uh, mount persistent volumes into your application that's been provided for you on the platform. So you do have to set up those persistent volumes as an administrator before you can mount them as a developer, but once they're there, you can mount them into your pods and containers and, and they'll live with the life of the application. All right, lastly, let's take a look at the settings tab. Here we can just see, you know, the name of the project, any quotas that you have. Um, since this is just a local uh, virtual machine that I'm running as a developer, at, we don't actually have any quotas, okay? So let's go back to the main project screen. Here we go, our PHP application. Now I want to show you the real power of this source to image and building these Docker containers on the fly. I want to go into my builds. So I'm going to click on this build here. Or sorry, let me browse into the builds. Let me click on the build front end here. I'm going to click on configuration. And then over here we have some webhooks. Now this is really cool stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the URL for this GitHub webhook. Okay. So I'll put that into my clipboard. Here's the full URL. I'm going to go over to my GitHub project. And I'm logged in here. So what I'm going to do is go to settings and webhooks and services. Let me delete this webhook and then let me log in here. And then I can add this webhook in. So let me paste that in. Uh, I'm going to disable SSL since I'm using a self signed cert. And then I'm going to add that webhook. Now, anytime that my application code changes, it's going to trigger a build inside of OpenShift. Now, <clears throat> that's not actually going to work for my environment because why? I am on a private IP address, so it's not actually going to be accessible from the outside um, network. But if it was, and I made that change, it would automatically update this uh, build with some new stuff, okay? So that's basically the OpenShift web console in a nutshell, right? We have this great, awesome uh, PHP application here um, that we deployed. Now I do want to switch over and show you the command line just real quick. Uh, let me clear our screen here and the command line tool that we ship with OpenShift 3 is called OC. So I can do OC login and say dash dash server equals 10.2.2 .2 .2 colon 8443. Let's throw HTTPS on the front of that. And hit enter there, and we used uh, what do we use? OpenShift and OpenShift, and so now it's going to say that I'm using a new project called Demo PHP. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So I can do OC get pods, and it'll list all of those pods. Now let's say I want to scale down on the command line. Now it's not as intuitive as the web browser or the web console, but I will show you how to do that. 
the way we scale is through the deployment config. So I can do OC get deployment config, and it's going to say that I have a deployment config called front end. So what I can do is say OC scale DC, which is the deployment config, give the deployment config a name and just say replicas equals two. And that's going to scale us down to two. And so if we go over our web console, we can see sure enough that we scaled down to two. So let's do something. Let's go up to 20 <clears throat> and then I'll switch over to the web console real quick so you can see it actually scaling up here. So you can see that, uh, you know, it talked via the REST API out to my server and it's going to scale this up to 20 pods. And it's starting to go. We're probably at 5, 10, 15, and bam, all the way up to 20. So pretty cool stuff. You can also actually scale down to zero, believe it or not. And that just leaves your application there, but it's not actually running, right? And so if you uh, just wanted to you know, have it sitting out there. Maybe you're doing some maintenance on it or whatever the case may be. Um, you can just have it sitting there. So let's scale this back to one. <coughs> so our application is up and running again. So let's do one other thing. Let's show you how to use application templates. Now I have an application template in a, a OpenShift 3 MLB Parks project, which is a geospatial based application. And so what we want to do is show you how to use a command line um, to create a Java-based application. So I'm going to say OC new project MLB Parks. Oh, that project already exists. I must have created as a uh, another user. So I'm going to call it OpenShift MLB Parks. So now we're using this OpenShift MLB Parks project. If I come back to the uh, OpenShift console, we can see that we have an OpenShift project here, but we don't have anything in our project. So what we support with OpenShift is the ability to have application templates, and this is powerful for development teams, because once you have your application up and running inside of the environment, like you want, maybe it's a complex application with some front end, some back end, some microservices, and you have it running, you can just create an application template, and then anyone who joins your team or wants to work on your source code can just basically recreate that entire project based off of an application template. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. And so I have my application template here. And so what I'm going to do is just create this application template. I'm just going to copy and paste the instructions here. Paste this in. I'm going to say OC create dash F, which means from a file, but it also takes a URL. And here's my JSON file that describes my application. So I'm going to create that. So now I have a template called MLB Parks. And so if you go back to the web console, if you click on Add to Project and you search here, or just it's actually the third one down here, you can see that this was actually created inside of the web console as well. So as a user of this project, I can create this, and it's going to create a EAP application with MongoDB. Um, I can also create it on the command line just by typing OC new app MLB parks. And that is going off, cloning that Git repository, setting up MongoDB, doing everything it needs to deploy this Java EE application out. So we have MongoDB already running, and now it's going to pull down and build that Java source code. And so let's take a look at this logs, and I'll show you what I was talking about with follow. I clicked the little follow button up there. And we can see that Maven is doing its build of this Java application. And so while that's going, let's create another project. And we're just going to call this Guestbook. <coughs> and now I'm using this Guestbook application. I want to show you how easy it is to use uh, containers or images that are not actually uh, in OpenShift. So I can do OC new app Kubernetes slash Guestbook. This is the famous Kubernetes guestbook application. And it's going to go out to um, Docker Hub and pull this down and run it for us. Okay. And so you can do this with any image on Docker Hub. And so let's go back to our projects here. Let's go to guestbook. And we can see that we have this guestbook application running, but we don't have a route for it yet. Um, so let's create a route. <coughs> Let's go to services here. I've never actually created a route inside of the web UI. I always use the command line. But it looks like we can click on create route here. 
and we're just going to click create see what happens <laughs> all right so it was smart enough to figure out how to create a route for us that's uh, addressable and so now if i click on that bam i have this kubernetes guestbook application running that we pulled down straight from docker hub so the the world is now open to you in running these docker containers locally on your machine even if they're not source to image enabled right so you can just go out to docker hub find something and spin it up let's go back to our projects here take a look at our openshift mlb parks uh, application check on it it is a uh, pretty uh, hefty java based application so it takes a while to build the build just finished so now it's creating that uh, docker image on the fly that we were talking about earlier and it's pushing that docker image up to the openshift registry and then once that image has been pushed to the registry you can see it happening down here on the very bottom line um, that image is going to then be available for deployment and so this can take a few minutes um, for it to actually uh, complete pushing this large Java image out to the registry the first time so the while that's going I do want to sh just show you a few things on the command line here as well so I can say OC get pods on this kubernetes guestbook application and we see that I have one pod running now if you remember I showed you how to scale this earlier in the video on the command line the flow is the same for every application so I'm just gonna walk through that again say OC get DC which is deployment config you can also type it out here if you want and this name is called guestbook so we can say OC scale deployment config guestbook set our replicas up to 10 and we'll scale guestbook up to 10 now if I do OC get pods there we go now remember I showed you um, these are currently scaling so they're in a pending state if we do it again maybe they're they'll be running some of them are running if you remember on the web console I showed you how to open up a shell inside of the browser <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you how to do that on the command line let me do OC get pods they're all running now and let's say I want to shell into this pod check this out I can type in OC RSH notice I have tab completion pretty fancy stuff guestbook and then to give it a pod name maybe I want to go into the d7 one and I have tab completion there courtesy of uh, Z shell and oh my ZSH and if you're interested in getting that set up just go to blogs.openshift.com search for Grant Shipley again you'll see a blog post I wrote about how to set this up so I'm just gonna RSH into that <coughs> oh it looks like uh, the Kubernetes guestbook application actually doesn't have bash in it so that is good to know right so you'll run into that at some point some of these uh, docker containers that you have don't actually allow you to execute a remote shell so let's uh, get our projects and let's switch over to the PHP one because we know that that one allows you to uh, execute a, a shell session so let's say OC project demo PHP I'll do OC get pods now let's do OC RSH front end WX and we can see that because this container actually has the bash shell installed on it I'm able to RSH into that container and I can you know look at my files do whatever I want to do here so let's do OC get pods again um, and let's do OC get projects and switch over to our OpenShift MLB parks project so I can do OC project open shift mlb parks and i want to do oc build logs uh, let's see oc get pods i can do oc log and then pass in my build pod and paste pass in dash f to follow and this is how you can look at your uh, log files on the command line just like we did in the browser so it looks like uh, that it successfully pushed that image um, looking at the last line here so let's go back to our project here and uh, take a look at the application here we go we have one JBoss EAP server running with a Java EE application backed with a Mongo database exposed via URL let's see if JBoss has actually came up yet sure enough it has and here's the application it's a geospatial based application um, that you can look at all the baseball stadiums so let's see how fast we can scale up uh, the old JBoss system here and Java's 
pretty renowned for being slow. Let's see if that's true. Let's scale it up to two here. It's thinking about it. Come on, Java. You can do it. Starting J-Boss up, I guess. So let's see how long it actually takes. Should be done. There we go. We're now up to two uh, J-Boss EAP servers, all load balanced. Let's, let's, uh, let's really get some heat going here. Let's do OC uh, get pods, what project am I in? And we know how to do this. We want to scale this up. So we're going to say OC get DC. And now we could scale up MongoDB or MLB Parks, the Java application. Let's say OC scale DC MLB Parks. We're going to set our rep because to let's scale up to 10 jball servers now keep in mind i am running all of this on eight gigs of ram so yeah so now we can come back here and it's going to scale this up look it's getting there okay so all of the containers have been created it's being replicated now we're just waiting on um, the containers to become active and uh, traditionally that'll mean you know waiting on jboss to to come up and for the application um, to start so this should be done just any second now. And so a few's coming online. So I'll move a little bit there. Maybe I should have scaled the other one down <laughs> to make up, uh, free up some memory. So actually, let's go, while this is finished and scaling up, let's go and browse our pods here. And now we can see that they're all running. Um, so it just took a, a second there. Um, so let's go into our pods. And what we can do is take a look at this first one that's been running for eight minutes. We can actually look at our metrics here. Remember that PHP application was using 52 megs of RAM. Initially, this Java one started with 473, and now it's down to about 248. Um, and here's the CPU that's using. This must have been when it was deploying the application and loading things in. And then we can look at the... Uh, CPU here, it's using three millicores. <laughs> All right, so I, I've taken up enough of your time. Again, this was totally uh, just an unscripted little demo that I wanted to uh, let you guys see kind of the stuff we've been working on in OpenShift and uh, hopefully pick your interest into downloading the all-in-one image and start playing around with it and using it for development. I'll create a, another video and perhaps a blog post later this week to show you how to set up hooks inside of your IDE for like PHP development so when you click on save a file it'll automatically instantly be updated in your container for rapid application development so, so anyway thanks for watching check out the all-in-one image see you later